I buy faulty electronic items on eBay, attempt to fix them and sell them on for a profit. Welcome your faces back to episode number 68 of the series, Profit or Loss. Recently, it's been a little bit hit or miss with some losses mixed in with some profits. Nonetheless, we're still in a total profit of 120 pounds and 90 pence. Today, I'm a little bit nervous with the items I've bought and I'll explain the story in just a second, but we're hoping to make a profit. Of course, should we attempt to fix one thing today or potentially two? Let's see how long the first one takes us, as always. I paid a grand total of £150 for this faulty PlayStation 5. Disc edition, may I add. Condition-wise, not fantastic. We've got a lot of scratch marks on the back. Overall, it's just not looking too healthy, if I'm honest. The front plate, again, very, very marked. This side, we have a sticker that says no power. As simple as that. So what's the first thing that we're going to do? I'll tell you what, we're going to test. Let's plug it in. I had a little bit of a crackle. Do we get anything when we push the power button? Three, two, one. No, completely dead. No power at all. Interesting. Okay, may have said this before, but when it is a complete no power, it makes the chance of fixing it slightly higher in my opinion and my experience of trying to fix PlayStation 5. So let's take this apart and see if we can work out exactly why it's not powering on and hopefully make a bit of a profit. Moment of truth. Warranty sticker, are you intact? No, you're not. You're void. You're void! Okay, not to sweat it. Okay, don't let that put us off. What is putting me off, however, is the state of this disk drive. These screws have been taken off before, which usually means this has been tampered with, which in turn, again, usually means that this probably isn't the correct disk drive for this console. I could be completely wrong, but time will tell. Just remember this part. That's even if we actually manage to get this uh, fixed. Do we have an SSD? Still not found one to this day, and... The streak continues. Not ridiculously dusty, actually pretty clean. I think it also looks like we have every single screw intact, which is a rarity. Looks like it's an older revision 010 because we have the two sets of antennas. This drive has been unplugged. We can also see here as well, the disk drive has definitely been taken off because of the cut down here. Not good, not good. This could be a write-off. I've said before that a lot of this series is trying to usually get an item that hasn't been opened before. Like that's what makes the difference between buying something that's worth it and uh, and something that's not. And clearly, I've let myself down here a little bit. I feel like that's what's happened recently with the previous consoles as well on the, uh, on the most recent episodes. Stuff has already been opened by people and tried to be fixed. I try and strike a good balance between content and actually having something to record and trying to find something that hasn't been repaired before. The actual percentage chance for me of trying to fix something that somebody's been in before is I would literally say around 20% success rate, maybe even a little bit less. But if you buy something that is faulty from eBay or anywhere for that matter, and it has the warranty sticker still intact, flip it on its head and it's an 80 to 90% success rate. First things first, do we get 12 volts coming into the console? I've just taken the heat uh, sink clamp off and I can't really see any signs of flux or work, but this has usually been the case recently. And then I get underneath the microscope and I can see that there's been a lot of work done to it so i'm not going to say nothing's been done to it just yet again it's been opened after all so do we have 12 volts here we do okay so power supply is good supposedly anyway we don't know what it's like under load but we have the initial 12 volts we got the 5 volts here and uh, do we have the 3.3 here okay we got the 3.3 as well no obvious shorts then straight away let me just hook up the multimeter here press the power button we get some sort of registration can you see that it zeroes out completely almost. Interesting. I think here we're around, we're meant to get around about two and a half volts when we push the power button. We get five volts on a fuse up here. We do, so that fuse is good. Can't see the other fuses until we flip the board around. Do we get the 3.3 on the south bridge? Yeah, we get 3.3 there and we get 3.3 in here. So supposedly the south bridge is also okay, but I could be completely and utterly incorrect. Like usual, I'm going to give this 12 volts through the power supply and see what kind of a draw we get. Okay, so it goes up to about 130 milliamps and drops straight back down. Pushing the power button does absolutely nothing. Come off, put it back on. And now we just sat at 8 milliamps. Absolutely nothing. I'm going to prod around the board with the multimeter and just look for shorts in continuity mode. And if I find anything, I shall let you know. But this is a little bit of a boring process and is a bit hit and miss. First of all, looking for those signs of, uh, of work. Do we have anything around the South Bridge? No. And the BIOS IC also has no flux around. SSD controller. How are we looking? Yeah, again, no work around that. Good. I'm now prodding around the back of the South Bridge. And look at this. If I measure here, this is ground because as you can see, it goes to the rest of the board. If I measure here, look at that. We have a seven ohm short on the back of the South Bridge. And it's not just that specific area that's shorted. I'm sure there are others as well. 
Where was it? Yeah, it's like on this big cap as well. Yeah. So I think we have a shorted Southbridge. This particular model being the 61GG. So let's get this off the board and see if our short does in fact disappear. I'll be honest, I'll be very shocked if somebody's gone in this and not been able to diagnose that it's the Southbridge. The PS5s that I've been um, that I've been diagnosing in the past three videos or so for the profit or loss series have actually come from the same seller. I bought four of them in total and I've looked at boards previously that have had the Southbridge change. So I'm, I'm a little bit shocked as to why they wouldn't have changed the Southbridge on this one. And obviously I'm not going to complain if it is something as simple as a Southbridge swap. I say as simple, this can still take quite a little bit of skill. And it's one of those things that the more you practice, the easier it does get. So I'm just using my heat now. It's 480 degrees Celsius with an airflow speed of 99%. Just to get the south bridge off the board and we'll find out if these pads are potentially oxidized or whether the chip is actually shorted internally because that can happen a lot as well now that the board is warm i'm going to come in with a flux and very soon we should be able to get the south bridge off the board i hope anyway because we have a visible short on the board i would actually suggest that the chip is internally shorted and it's not just oxidized pads how does the chip look chip looks okay we now move quickly with more flux here and just come in with our soldering iron put a load of leaded solder on that and go over the solder we have on the board already we're mixing the leaded with the unleaded to make it easier for us to wick away this solder now we come in with the braid and what I like to do is just simply rest my iron on top of the braid and use the wick to do the work. Let the wick do the work slowly. I'm not really pushing down on my iron, it's simply laying on top of it. I find this to work easiest and best for me without scratching away some of the conformal coating. There are times you can't help it, it will just happen. But if you have a little bit of patience, this is what I found has worked for me. Okay, cotton swab whilst the board is hot. Take up all that flux. And then we have it. Nice flat pads for the majority of them anyway. I can't really see any solder on those pads anymore. Now I will come in again with a little bit of heat here. Same, exactly the same, 480 degrees Celsius. Airflow speed, 99%. Just to get that remaining flux off the board rather than using IPA. IPA can sometimes just spread, spread that flux around. And get it into places you don't want. Whereas you heat it up, it becomes really nice and easy to clean. There we go. You have to make sure you have a good flux as well, of course. There it is. Nice and clean. Now, another place I actually had this short was, I think on these caps up here. So is that short gone? Looks like it already. Look at that. Ball's still going to be very warm as well. So our short is gone. Let's turn it over and check that same area on the back of the south bridge just here. I'm pretty sure it was this big cap up here. Yeah. Short be gone. Lovely jubbly. Now I'm hoping if we replace this south bridge and we actually manage to get the board up and running, the disk drive that seems to be dismantled, I'm hoping maybe a disk just got stuck and they had to take apart the disk drive to retrieve the disk. Here we should have a nice 61 GG board. Yeah, it looks good. Warm this board up again here using again 480 degrees Celsius just to make sure we don't lose that heat in the board. Make our lives easier when we actually go to install a new chip. Fume extractor on because health is wealth. Coming with a little bit of flux here. Now that is a little bit too much. So we'll just spread this out. Line up our south bridge. Make sure we have it in the correct orientation. Pin one is indeed oh, over in that top right position there. I think that's it. Coming with the tweezers holding the center. Ah. Try again. Tweezers in centre, slowly, lift, lovely. Might actually need to come round a little bit there. I like to lower the temperature now to about 460 degrees Celsius and just put the least amount of heat that we need onto this IC. This was in fact a donor one, by the way. So I'm really hoping that this works. I'm going to say that's on pretty good. Just to test, I'll come in with my tweezers and make sure. Yeah, it's not moving. So now we come in with the flux because that solder on the bottom of the chip is now bonded with the solder with the pads on the board. Made a solid connection. 
Now we come over the flux. One of the most important things to do here is clean out the flux from underneath the south bridge once we're done with it. So I will be flushing it out. And that flux is now going underneath the chip, you can see. I'll give it a little tap. You can see we have the resistance is pulling itself back into place. That is absolutely fine. We hope, anyway, we can hope. And as again, you just saw that flux went back underneath that IC. That's what we need to get rid of. That All of that flux needs to come back out because otherwise it can mess with the crystal underneath and sometimes we just, we, we'll still get no power and it won't work correctly. So I'm just gonna pour some IPA on, tilt the board up and use a air compressor. One last little cleaner that we flushed out with a cotton swab here, just to make sure we get all around the area. Drop of IPA. There we go. Right. How do we look? Do we look clean? Okay, yeah, it looks good. Clean from this side. Yeah. Let's get a little bit more height on it if we can to give us a better image. Yeah, it looks nice. This angle will probably show it best, nice and clean. And just for that extra confirmation, there we go. Okay, so we've now got what, 800 ohms? Yeah, 850 ohms on that cap that was previously shorted, as well as, yeah, same down here. So it's all on the same rail, that 850 ohms. So I'm hoping. That's going to be a bit better now. We'll see. Did we replace the south bridge successfully? And if we did, do we have any more shorts or issues with this board? Because that is still 100% a possibility, even if we get it to power on. Here comes the nerve racking part. Front panel. LEDs. Oh, the LEDs are broke again. Same thing. But can you see down here? Look, I've just realized. It's not even plugged in. <laughs> the LED ribbon cable isn't even plugged in. Okay, let's just take that out. Is that cable going to be long enough? Yeah, I think I have a replacement here. Okay, here we go. All right, three, two, one. Okay, please stay on. Do, do not go off. Just keep that light. Keep that light. Please go to a white light. I beg. This will be incredible. I'll be so happy if we manage to get this working. Please, it's still on, which is good. Just don't turn off. Please don't turn off. White light, yes! It's most probably going to turn off and go back to a blue light and then a white light again. Is that going to be the situation or are you going to just stay on the white light? Maybe it's going to stay on the white light. Okay. I'm going to plug in the HDMI cable. It shows up HDMI 1. You guys aren't going to be able to see just yet. Yes, we look good. We actually managed to get it working, as in get it on. There's still a lot, I mean, I, the, the disk drive, I'm not very hopeful for, if I'm being honest, but like I said, I'm, I'm kind of praying that they just wanted to get a disk out rather than actually swap over the correct PCB for that disk drive. So I'll put it back together, sort out the thermal paste, give it a nice clean, and then we'll test the disk drive to see if it installs a disk. If it does and it updates after maybe I've reset the console, then we are in the clear. But still a long way to go just yet. HDCP has been disabled. It does look like from what I can see, there is a disk in. It's FIFA 20. 22 if i go to launch the game oh wait it says insert the disc oh so maybe that maybe that little circle just straight up means it needs a disc to play perhaps i don't know if we go over to the disc drive okay so it's making a beeping noise i don't know if it's coming across on camera or not but it's not actually doing anything what about if i try and put a disc in it doesn't feel like a disc is in there but it's also not accepting it okay Oh, so is it just not alive here? Like what's happening here? I don't understand. Okay, I think we also have a bad disk drive, I'm assuming. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is take the PCB out of it and put it into another disk drive. The nightmare is becoming slowly more and more true. It's this little PCB here inside the disk drive which is gonna make all the difference. So I'm gonna start by unscrewing these screws. I have no problem actually replacing the disk drive because I've got a lot as spares but if this pcb has been swapped and isn't married with the ps5 then we're not going to be able to use a disk drive with this console what's happened here it's been cut why why do i feel like we're missing something from here oh, it's the ribbon cable it's meant to be a ribbon cable that goes from here to under here so this part is just not in great condition is it now i need to see if i've got a disk drive that matches up with this connector this is missing the ribbon cable that goes inside the bigger one which then in turn hooks up to this little fpc connector i say little big fpc connector on the disk drive board i just really hope again for the 13th time this is the correct board i actually being honest have no idea if this one works it was at the top of the pile 
Ah, it doesn't have the wire. Brilliant. I know this one is a known working disk drive. Let's see what the situation is. I don't know why I've only just noticed this, but the um the fan's not spinning. It's definitely plugged in. So have they swapped out for a faulty fan as well? Oh, I don't understand. Yeah, it's definitely not spinning, is it? And it's 100% plugged in. Let's swap out for another NIDEC replacement. Well, we're going through the parts today. Luckily, I've got all these spares. Because if I didn't, this would be definitely not worth to fix. Let's try that now. Does the fan spin? Yeah. I don't believe it. They've swapped out even a faulty fan as well. Oh my gosh. I'm definitely, this seller that I bought these, these PlayStations from, definitely not buying from them again, that's for sure. So bad. Okay, console on. Does it beep? It does. Okay. Does it take in a disc? Okay, it does. Good. So again, disc drive, absolutely fine. Making all the right noises. You can also see at the top of the screen, we have the circle disc going around. That's good. Okay, FIFA 23. There we go. It's picked up the disc itself. I think I'm going to have to go through the update process just to make sure that this disc drive and the board is okay. I don't know if playing the game is enough. I'm not too sure. I lack experience to know in testing wise whether that is enough to declare it working or not. Let's see if there is an update to do. Update available. Okay. I'm going to need to reset it because only the host can do it anyway. I'll reset the PS5 and I'll see if the update goes through. Hopefully it does. The update has gone through and the console has since been reset. I've installed FIFA and played a little bit of Fortnite on it just for testing. But it definitely looks like what they've done is swapped out the good disk drive that they had and just put a faulty one in there to sell the whole console as faulty and save the good bits. It's exactly the same what they've done with the fan. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to please one person and one person only. And that is Sally. Now, I paid £150 for this PS5 for the parts. If I didn't have any of those spare parts, it would not have been a profit in any way, shape or form. But seeing as I had the spare parts from previous consoles that we sent to the graveyard, that's going to be zero. Sell price, again, £270. Gives us a total gross profit in today's video of £95.70. Pence. Go over to the total. For the whole series itself, we are in a profit of £216.60. Pence. I'm going to take that and run with it for this one. I think I got extremely lucky. If you enjoyed this episode, I'll leave last week's up here. Thank you very, very much for watching. Have a great rest of your day, week slash weekend, whatever it is. And I'll see you as always in the next one. Peace.